Another enlightening episode of The Truth About the Plant, the show that takes you on a journey through the world of psychoactive plants and alternative wellness, all while delivering the real actionable insights you crave. I'm your host, Christina Dees. This is my equally talented co-host, Dr. Amanda Ryman. And Dr. Ryman, you get to tell them why we're here. Why do we do this? Well, we're here because it can be so difficult to find accurate information about cannabis on the internet. You may have a pressing question, you Google it, and you get a hundred different responses. And many of those responses may completely contradict each other depending on the source. So we are here to give you science-backed, evidence-informed information about how to use cannabis safely and responsibly so that you can get the information you need and get on with your day. We will always tell you the truth, just like your really cool aunties or your kick-ass granddaughters. You can trust us. And today we're tackling another viewer question, one that's been sparking debates. Does cannabis cause mental illness? Well, get ready to dive deep and separate fact from fiction as we explore some mind-blowing truths about the green wonder. All right, Dr. Ryman, one of the first things I heard about cannabis was that it can make you go crazy. Obviously, that was meant to scare me and other people away from trying it. But where did this idea come from and is there any truth here? Well, the claim that cannabis somehow causes mental illness is actually very, very old. Uh, we first saw this occur in the early 1900s when we had an influx of Mexican immigration into the United States. And because of fear of immigrants, not really fear of cannabis, it was passed around the idea that these, this marijuana that this, this group was using um, was somehow turning them into killers that was making them crazy. Basically, it was couched in the idea that you could not trust somebody who was using cannabis to make good decisions. That's really what this comes down to, is wanting people to believe that if you're with somebody that uses cannabis or you yourself are using cannabis, that is going to impair your judgment to the point that you are going to act not like yourself, or your behavior is going to be completely unpredictable. And they would equate that with going crazy, right, with mental illness. So we saw this resurface with the movie Reefer Madness in the 1930s, um, again in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s with groups that were music musicians and artists and free thinkers. And again, it was really meant to imply that a perfectly sane person could lose their marbles just by using cannabis. So if you Google, does cannabis cause mental illness, even today in 2024, you're going to get some sources that say yes. And then you're going to get a lot of sources that say absolutely not, in no way, any way does it impact mental health. And that's why we're here, because the answer really is a little bit more complicated than that. And so we're going to get into some of those nuances in today's show. Okay, well, I know a lot of people that use cannabis to help with anxiety and depression and also for PTSD. So isn't that mental health? Absolutely. So as we've talked about on the show before, we have endocannabinoid receptors all through our bodies, including in our brain, and these receptors help regulate mood. So cannabis and mental health are definitely connected, but cannabis works different for everybody. So for some people, cannabis can really help their mental health symptoms. For other people, cannabis can make their symptoms worse. And for even other people, it doesn't have any effect at all. And this isn't that different than other medications that people use for mental health issues. So if you go to a doctor to get help for depression or anxiety, you may have to try three or four different medications before you find the one that works for you. Um, so it is definitely going to be dependent on the individual. So we really can't say that cannabis absolutely 100% helps mental health issues or absolutely 100% causes mental health issues, because the truth is it's really going to depend on who you are and your history. Yeah, I know a lot of people, it's like, do they vibe with it? You know, some have tried it and been like, that's just not for me. I don't feel good. It makes my heart race or it makes me, you know, paranoid or um, it didn't help. So what is the risk? And is it different for people with a history of mental health issues versus someone who's never experienced any health issues? Absolutely. And here's really where we get into the difference between correlation and causation. So causation is saying that A is causing B to happen. Uh, it means that A is the only cause of B, that A happens before B, and that there's a direct causal relationship. 
When we talk about cannabis and mental health, we are not talking about a causal relationship. What we're talking about is correlation, which means that thing A can be associated with thing B, but things C, D, and E can also be associated with thing B. And it's more of a cluster of environmental, genetic, social factors that may result in B happening. And so when we talk about cannabis and mental health especially, it becomes complicated because we have more of a chicken or egg issue. So when we look at the average age of somebody trying cannabis for the first time, it's usually between the ages of 15 and 19. When we look at the age of onset for mental health issues that somebody may be experiencing, it's usually around the same time period, which means that it's hard to detangle whether or not someone started using cannabis and then developed issues they wouldn't have developed otherwise, or if they started developing mental health issues and were using cannabis to self-medicate. So all of this is to say that if you have a personal history of mental health issues, or there are mental health issues in your family, meaning that you're predisposed to them, um, or if you had a mental health issue in the past and then you treated it and now the symptoms have gone away, you need to be especially careful when using something like cannabis. But we have no evidence that cannabis causes somebody who has no history of mental health issues who is not experiencing them, who has never been treated with them to suddenly develop these issues simply because they used cannabis. And so I've heard before about schizophrenia, that if it runs in your family or if you have a history of it, or if maybe you have it, and you don't know it and you try cannabis, that it can cause, bring on the onset of schizophrenia. So what does this all mean for the average person who may want to try cannabis? So it's really important that you know your family history. Um, you know, schizophrenia can be a genetically determined condition. And like you said, if you've never experienced symptoms, you may not know you have it until you experience symptoms. So if you think about like a peanut allergy, which can be fatal, you may not know you have a peanut allergy. In fact, you won't know you have a peanut allergy until you eat a peanut and something happens, right? Or you go to the doctor and they give you a test specifically for a peanut allergy. So even though about 75% of people who are gonna experience mental health issues feel those first symptoms by the time they're 24 or 25, there is about a quarter of those people who will not experiencing them, experience them until later in life. So if you have any concern meaning that a depression runs in your family or anxiety runs in your family or schizophrenia or psychosis or bipolar disorder, or if you have experienced those symptoms in the past when you were younger, even if you're not experiencing them anymore, you should take care not only when using cannabis, but when using any mind or mood altering substance. Because if you are somebody that's predisposed to a mental health issue, using one of these substances, like you said, it can bring on symptoms earlier. So maybe the symptoms weren't gonna present themselves till later in life, but they present earlier. And it could make them present more severely than if you had not used that substance. So it's really important to understand your family history. If you are somebody that is interested in using cannabis to treat a mental health issue, it is very important that you talk to a doctor that you trust. Um, this is one, because like I said, there are certain risks to using cannabis to treat a mental health issue because it could make it worse or it could not help at all. And there can also be interactions between cannabis and other medications that are commonly used to treat mental health issues. So if this is you, not saying that you shouldn't explore cannabis as a treatment, but you definitely want to do so under professional care. And if you are using cannabis to treat a mental health issue or not, you're just using cannabis and it doesn't sit right with you. As you mentioned, some people get anxious, some people have their heart rate, some people get paranoid, some people get depressed. It's okay, it just may not be for you. Um, so you may wanna reevaluate whether or not you should use cannabis. You may wanna reevaluate the products you're using. So we have a whole episode about different methods of ingestion. You may wanna reevaluate your use patterns overall. So really the takeaway is that it's important to be really in tune and in touch with your mental health and pay attention to the impact that any substance, including cannabis, has on your well being. Yeah, and I'm really glad that you brought up the fact that it's important to speak to your doctor 
or your uh, a health professional about your cannabis use. And lucky for you, we have another episode that answers that exactly. Uh, how do I talk to my doctor about my cannabis use? So if you like this episode, be sure to check out more episodes in the bank. Um, and as we wrap this episode, if you have your own burning question like this one that we answered today, reach out to us at info at mypersonalplants.com. We would love to answer your question on the show. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.